Welcome back to the very last lesson in this Learning U.S. Politics Through Film course. This time we're going to be talking about foreign policy. Now, the United States' presence in the world is unparalleled. We could argue all day about the reemergence of Russia on the world stage or the potential for a future China-India joint world power, but as of right now, the United States is the most important superpower. There's just no argument about that. According to Wikipedia, in 2015, the United States spent $596 billion on its military. The country with the second most military spending, China, spent less than half of that at $214 billion. Saudi Arabia is the third biggest military spender, and it spends less than half of that at $87 billion. And that's just the military. Foreign policy involves a lot more than just military and strategic interest. There's economic policy, trades, U.S. companies doing business abroad, foreign countries doing business in the U.S., and of course, diplomacy. And then you have the intelligence industry, which should really be considered separate from the military. Members of the CIA, NSA, and nowadays the FBI is even playing a bigger role in intelligence, and the, all their employees are generally considered civilians. Yes, espionage certainly has connections with military actions, and those lines do get blurred, but intelligence at its basic level is about information that helps leaders with their decision-making, and that's fundamentally different from the role of the military. Okay, enough chit-chat, right? The first film for this lesson is 13 Days. This follows John F. Kennedy and his closest advisors as they navigate the Cuban Missile Crisis in a famous diplomatic showdown with the Soviet Union that did actually happen. 13 Days expertly showcases how the president manages all of the competing information from military and diplomatic advisors and makes crucial decisions. Of course, the film naturally glosses over some parts of the true story, but on the whole, it's faithful to the events. More than that, it'll teach you a lot about what it's like to be the president. While the president is the most important leader in terms of foreign policy, Congress does have a very important role. To make it really simple, Congress controls the budget. It also has a very important oversight role over the president in the form of its military and intelligence committees. All of these things come up in the film Charlie Wilson's War. Now, the film does have a fair bit of nudity in the first part, but very quickly gets down to the business of geopolitics. What I found really interesting in this film was the role of special interests. Pay close attention to the character Joanna and her role. She's not an elected official of any kind. She's not in the military. She's a private citizen. But she's a rich business owner that becomes passionate about an issue. Now, we can assume that she's donated lots of money over the years to Charlie Wilson's campaigns. So whenever she calls him, he picks up the phone and he listens to her. Another film related to the connection between special interests and military is Good Kill by Ethan Hawke. Now, for one, it talks about the use of militarized drone technology for extrajudicial assassinations. That by itself is an important political issue, but not the primary reason I'm recommending the film. Even though it's not a critical part of the plot, as you watch the film, think about the community just outside of the military base. It's a large military base, and the soldiers spend a lot of time in the community. They actually live in the community. They visit the bars and the restaurants in the community. They buy cars and houses. This is money being injected into the community by the military. Now think about the people in Congress that represent that area. How are they going to feel about a proposal that would see the base moved out of the area or even just uh, made smaller? They would be totally against it. Moving a military base or even just an ammunition factory has huge effects on local economies that make it very difficult to make changes to. This concept is called client politics, and it is important not just for military bases on U.S. soil, but also for the hundreds of military bases on foreign soil around the world. Okay, stepping back from the military side of things, I want to look at the world of diplomacy. You saw the importance of diplomacy in 13 days, but it didn't show much of the large bureaucracy of the State Department. Most of the work of the State Department does not lend itself well to the dramatic settings of film. But you do see a bit of it in the show Homeland. And then the movie Argo. Argo in particular shows embassy staff as really quite normal people. Certainly smart and educated, but not action heroes either. Oh yeah, and Argo is, of course, based on a true story again. 
Similarly, the day-to-day -day work of the CIA, that is the Central Intelligence Agency, is not generally the stuff of action movies either. Homeland, which is the show I just mentioned, gets into the espionage side of things, but that's only a tiny percentage of what the CIA does. And there are really not that many employees whose jobs are focused on that type of covert operations work. I like the film The Recruit, starring Colin Farrell and Al Pacino for this reason. Yes, it is about the intrigue of espionage, but the entire film actually takes place on U.S. soil. And you even get a glimpse of the life of a typical CIA analyst, working basically a 9 to 5 desk job, eating at the company cafeteria, and so on. In other words, quite the opposite from this romantic James Bond image we have of spies hanging out at cocktail parties and hobnobbing with the rich and famous. If you want a really accurate view of what life is like for a real CIA spy, then the film Spy Game will be right up your alley. Covert operatives are not generally like Jason Bourne, you know, assassinating people in the shadows and so on. Instead, they mostly spend their time recruiting assets. And this is what Spy Game does a great job of showing. What stands out in my mind about this film is a particular scene where Brad Pitt is working in the relative comfort of West Berlin, and he's just meeting people that came from the Soviet-controlled East Side and trying to convince them to go back to the East to bring back useful information. That is truly representative of the day-in, day-out work of being a spy for the CIA. Now, that work can happen in many different types of contexts, with many different levels of danger associated with it, but that's the basic job. Now, what most people commonly think of as the work of spies, you know, those covert operations with highly trained soldiers come in with guns blazing and so on, that does happen, but it's just not part of the typical work of the CIA. That's the work of something called the Joint Special Operations Command. And it really involves, you know, basically the best, the top uh, operators from all the other agencies, Defense Department, military, CIA, NSA, all, they take, they recruit people from all different places and put them under JSOC. And JSOC operates outside of the normal chain of command for both military and intelligence. It takes orders directly from the president. The, f the film that really shows a lot of what JSOC does is called Zero Dark Thirty. It's a somewhat controversial film itself, uh, but it does kind of show the basics of JSOC. Now, there's a problem with that system where it's, you know, operating completely outside of the normal chain of command. And that's that, you know, something that JSOC is doing can kind of clash with what the forces on the ground are doing. In other words, there may be troops working in a small village, living there for months or years, trying to build relationships with the local people. Maybe they're training the police force or helping to rebuild schools or something. Well, when JSOC, completely independently, hears that the cousin or father-in-law or former college roommate of a known terrorist is the principal of this school in this little town and they think they want to interview them, they come in in the middle of the night with helicopters, flashbang grenades, guns up, grab the person, pull them out. Maybe some people even die in the middle of this operation. How much did that 30-minute operation affect the lives of the troops on the ground that have been working in the village for months and years trying to build those relationships with the local population? The answer is it hurt those troops a lot in their efforts. Now, JSOC really wasn't a thing until the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, but the precursor to JSOC was Delta Force. Delta Force was really important in the incident that was later made into the film Black Hawk Down. This film is also a fascinating case study in U.S. foreign policy on its own. One inaccuracy in the film, though, is that it makes it look like U.S. forces conducted the operation, you know, completely ignoring the United Nations really for no reason. In reality, there was a pretty good reason for not telling the UN what they were doing, and that's that somebody in the UN chain of command was leaking information to the Somali warlords they were trying to capture. Now, when Barack Obama became president, it wasn't really certain what was going to happen with JSOC. Now, that is until a famous incident where an American boat captain was taken hostage. JSOC saved the boat captain in a spectacular fashion right out of a G.I. Joe episode or something and basically won Obama over. Obama continued to use JSOC for his foreign policy goals after that. Incidentally enough, 
Uh, that incident was also made into a film called Captain Phillips, starring Tom Hanks, that you can see. Also, the Somali pirates that are now causing problems, a lot of them are the same people that were involved with warlords in Somalia during the Black Hawk Down incident. So these connections, these incidents are kind of coming back to haunt us, this unfinished business uh, that happened. Okay, so we've covered a ton of ground in this last lesson. 13 Days, Charlie Wilson's War, Good Kill, Homeland, Argo, The Recruit, Spy Game, Zero Dark Thirty, Black Hawk Down, Captain Phillips. Good news is a lot of these are action films or spy films. They're really fun to watch. So I hope you keep in mind the things that I mentioned in this lecture as you watch, and you should come away with a pretty good understanding of how the U.S. conducts its foreign policy. Thank you so much for watching this series of videos. Uh, I hope that they've helped you, gotten you interested, and you know allowed you to make more sense of what you see in the headlines about the U.S.'s role in the world.